Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, ISIS, before his death, has said that they will regroup in Africa. He made this statement when he observed how their territory was being destroyed in Syria and in Iraq. This phenomenon is happening. It's happening now and it's happening out of sight. It's happening at a very fast rate. These fighters from ISIS and Al-Qaeda comprises of local nationals, people from Burkina Faso, from Mali and from Niger. Some are from Nigeria and other local areas within the West African sub-region. Having said that, it is an international global organization that has control over vast swath land in the tri-border area of Burkina Faso, Niger and Mali. When he was sworn into office, the Burkina Bi president, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Damiba, reshuffled the army command with the objective of ending the country's crippling security crisis. In his view, elected officials failed to execute this agenda. As part of a peacemaking process to convince armed groups to lay down their arms, the Bokinabi president convinced local communities to build dialogue with armed groups believed to be linked to Al-Qaeda and ISIS. The last two years, however, has been overwhelming to see how much territory ISIS have gained and how ferocious their offensive attacks have been. Military battles for territory with the advancing armed groups continue to further shrink in parts of Burkina Faso. Currently, they control vast areas of land in West Africa, particularly Burkina Faso. Violence has worsened under military rule. These attacks and defeats at the hands of the Islamic rebels have created a strong frustration within the ranks and file of the Burkinabi military, resulting in mixed feelings for Kenel Damiba's government. Captain Ibrahim Traore is no exception to this feeling. He feels the army can do better. 3 a.m. Burkina Faso, Ouagadougou. On September 30th, 2022, at approximately 3 a.m., residents of Ouagadougou were awoken by explosions. Gunfire erupted in the capital with the head of state Paul Damiba believed to be in the presidential palace. However, there was no word about him nor his whereabouts. Soldiers took to the streets and heavy gunfire was heard near the main military camp and residential areas of Burkina Faso's capital. A large blast also detonated near the presidential palace with soldiers taking up positions. Soldiers were also sighted along the main avenue leading to the presidential palace, administrative buildings and the national television station. The national television station ceased broadcasting and instead showed a blank screen saying no video signal. Several major and main roads within the capital Ouagadougou were blocked by troops. With the whereabouts of the head of state not immediately known, a statement from his government on Facebook urged people to remain calm. Negotiations are underway to bring back calm and serenity. The enemy attacking our country only wants division between Burkinabis. The uncertainty remained the same until late afternoon, with residents of the West African nation waiting to hear word of who was in control of the country. There was still no public announcement on the rationale behind the troop movement in Ouagadougou. Later on in the night, approximately 15 armed soldiers in fatigues and masks appeared on the radio television broadcaster shortly before 8 a.m. local time and read out a statement to confirm the ouster of President Paul Henry Damiba. We have decided to take our responsibilities driven by a single ideal, the restoration of security and integrity of our territory, they said. Faced with the deteriorating situation, we tried several times to get Damiba 
to refocus the transition of the security question. Damibe's actions gradually convinced us that his ambitions were diverting away from what we set out to do. We decided this day to remove Damiba. National stakeholders will be invited to adopt a new transitional charter and designate a new civilian or military president, the statement said. They declared the Damiba government dissolved, the constitution suspended and the borders closed and installed a nightly curfew. They finally declared the country's new strongman as Captain Ibrahim Traore. After a two-day standoff between the Janta Chief Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Damiba and the newly emerged 34-year-old Captain Ibrahim Traore, Calm returned to Burkina Faso's capital after the military leader agreed on Sunday, the 2nd of October 2022, to step down. It followed mediation between the Janta Chief and the new self-proclaimed leader, Ibrahim Traore. The standoff also saw violent protests at the French Embassy and the Culture Center. Lieutenant Colonel Damiba formally resigned on Sunday, the 2nd of October 2002, in exchange for the new Jantes agreeing to respect seven conditions. The main important conditions were a guarantee of his personal and family security and rights, a guarantee of security for his allies in the military, an agreement to continue with efforts at national reconciliation, a continued respect to the pledge he had given to the West African Regional Bloc for a return to civilian rule within two years. Captain Ibrahim Traore accepted the conditions and invited the population to exercise calm, restraint and prayer. The Usted Kennel then departed the country to neighboring Togo. On Monday, 3rd October 2022, the Togolese government confirmed the arrival of Usted military junta on its soil as part of efforts to support peace in the sub-region. In a statement by religious and community leaders, Lieutenant Colonel Damiba offered to resign in order to avoid confrontations with serious human and material consequences.